Hey, welcome back, Akuo. Welcome to week seven of, of this church existing. It's crazy to think that we're this far already. So if you're new here, I just want to personally welcome you. My name is Abel. I'm your worship leader here at Akuo Church. And everyone who's already a part of the community, let's throw down some, some thumbs up, some hands in the air, some fire emojis, just to welcome our newcomers. I don't care if you're watching this on Sunday, if you're watching this the week after, if you're watching this a year after we put this out. We are so glad that you're tuning in, and I just hope that God can meet you exactly where you're at because I know that's exactly the God that he is. So as we do that, let's sing out some praises and just honor and bless him with all that we are. Come on. Higher than the mountains. Higher than the mountains that I face And it's stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change This one thing remains This one thing remains Never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Come on, on and on and on it goes. And on and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains This one thing This one thing remains Your love Your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up it never runs out on me oh your love in death and in life we're confident in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me oh your love and on and on it goes and on and on and on and on it goes and it overwhelms and satisfies my soul and i never ever have to be afraid this one thing remains this one thing remains your love your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me oh your love in death and in life in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid my debt is paid there's nothing that can separate my heart your great love your love 
never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Oh, your love. Come on, let's sing out, Grace, what have you done? of wrong my sin washed away in your blood too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall the scandal of grace you died in my place so oh, my soul be like you give all I have just to know you Jesus there's no one beside you forever the hope in my heart yeah yeah you're forever the hope you're forever the whole Come on, our King has overcome it all So we sing out, death, where's your sting? And death, where is your sting? Your power is as dead as my sin The cross has taught me to live Mercy, my heart now to sing. The day in its trouble shall come. I know that your strength is enough. The scandal of grace, you died in my place, so oh, my soul will live. Oh, to be like you. All I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one beside you Forever the hope in my heart Oh, to be like you Oh, to be like you Give all I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one beside you Forever the hope, forever the hope in my heart Yeah, yeah You're forever the hope You're forever the hope and it's all because of you And it's all because of you And it's all because of you, Jesus It's all because of you, Jesus It's all because of your love that my soul It's all because of your love that my soul will live Oh, to be like you, give all I have just
just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Oh, to be like you. Oh, to be like you. Give all I have just to know there's no one beside you forever the whole forever the hope in my heart and it's all because of you Jesus it's all because of you Jesus it's all because of your love that my soul will live and it's all because of you Jesus because of your love because of your grace that you displayed on that cross the scars that you wear that were so rightfully ours the death and the cross that we deserved but God out of your mercy you bore the price for us so we choose to look towards you to thank you with everything that we are so let us become more like you Jesus let us display to our communities the character of your love, of your perfect grace, so that they would come to know you. So Jesus, the best that we know how, we lay down our lives in praise and worship to you. We pray all these things in your powerful, mighty name, the only name that saves, the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. You guys, enjoy the rest of the service. Hey Akuo Church, it's great to be with you once again for week seven of services. We are continuing in this series called Learn To. In this entire series, we will be doing a deep dive of the four L's of Akuo. The four L's of Akuo are an explanation of how we will bring people into community with Jesus and one another. The ways we will bring people into community are by listening to God, loving people, leading by empowering, and linking to our community. We are in the first part of our series focusing on listen. Our hope is that by the time this section of the series is done, you will have a great idea on how to listen to God's voice. Now, the reason we want you to be able to tune into God's voice is because it's been such a major part of how we got this church, Akuo Church, started. You see, a year ago, this week, I heard God's voice say for me to knock on the door of Redeemer Lutheran Church and ask for a building. From that moment on, everything started falling together for us. Time after time, week after week, we met the right people, found the right things that would help us move in the right direction. Because of everything that happened that day, we now have a Kuo Church. For those of you that don't know, a Kuo is a Greek word for listen. It literally means to listen. So listening to God's voice is something that will always be a part of our culture here. And that's why we want you guys to know about that. Now, things we're a little scary at the start of our journey about a year ago. But me and Abel started moving and our support from City Tribe Church, who uh, helped us get started here, was absolutely fantastic. When the new year rolled around, we were on schedule to be able to open our doors on July 12th. We'd been doing our due diligence, learning from places on how to open a church and getting our gear lists and budgets together. But in March, everything totally changed. Not just, a kuo, not just for a kuo, but for everyone. COVID-19 went from this thing that was happening on the other side of the world to a full-blown pandemic. When that happened, I was spinning. Really, I couldn't find my footing anywhere. Schools were closing down. What are we going to do with our kids? So my, my home life wasn't 
exactly settled. My wife, who works for SEISD, was in meeting after meeting where they were trying to learn how to do school all over again, and she was stressed out beyond belief. Uh, so again, home wasn't very settled. In the middle of all that, I wasn't sure what was going to happen with my career because who wants to start a church in the middle of a global pandemic? Now, just so you guys know, I didn't. I did not want to get this church started in the middle of one of the strangest seasons in any of our lifetimes. I was looking at this with nothing but questions of my own. Then I started having other people ask me what we were planning on doing and how we were planning on doing it. Guys, I didn't know what to say. In those early days, I didn't know how we were going to do any of this. If there was ever a time that I needed to hear from God, it was in that exact season. Now, what about you? Have you ever found yourself in a situation like this? Not necessarily starting a new church in the middle of a global pandemic, but did you find yourself as someone that was incredibly faithful and totally lacking fear until COVID hit? Were you someone that was completely unshaken by this world until you got that cough? that you just couldn't shake? Were you able to lean on God for everything until you lost your job? Did your faith carry you through all things in your life until you lost that one person that you could lean on? Guys, we have all dealt with this in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't make you a bad Christian if you doubted or had lapses in faith. As a matter of fact, it's something that actually connects us. Almost everyone I know has had a lapse in faith. Now, it varies in length and degree, but we have all done it, and we all do it at some point. We are all in good company, because some of the most celebrated people in the Bible have done the exact same thing. One of those people was Moses. Now, last week we talked about Moses, and I explained uh, the first half of his story. I explained what the social climate was when he was born, uh, how the Egyptians had enslaved the Hebrews or, or the Jewish people. You see, the Egyptians were also encouraged to kill the firstborn sons of the Hebrew people. I mean, it wasn't just uh, like a bad time. It was a time of straight up genocide. Moses was born into a time of fear for the Hebrews. But Moses' mother had an idea. She put her child in a basket and sent him down the river, and the daughter of the Pharaoh, a real-life princess, finds him. She ends up naming him Moses and raised him as her own. He grew up in the palace and learned all the ways of being an Egyptian. In this time, God had created Moses to do and be something special. Don't forget, Moses in Hebrew literally means to raise up. In other words, he was called the rescuer because one day he would rescue the Hebrews from Egypt. So whenever he sees people being oppressed, Moses springs into action. It blows up in his face one day though. You see, one day while he's overseeing some work being done, an Egyptian begins to mistreat one of the Hebrew workers. So, and, and starts to beat him. So Moses jumps in, looks around to make sure nobody's looking. And then he kills the Egyptian and buries the man so no one would find out. Shortly after that, though, Pharaoh does find out and Moses has to leave Egypt. He leaves the region uh, to the region of Midian. And while he is there, he sees something going down in Midian. So let's take a look at Exodus 2. There it says, When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to draw water and fill the water troughs for their father's flocks. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the shepherds. Then he drew water for their flocks. Last week we talked about this. No matter where Moses goes, he's going to be the rescuer that God created him to be. It is what he was created for. So what happens after he saves the priest's daughters? Let's look back at the scripture. When the girls returned to rule, their father, he asked, why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. Then where is he? Their father asked. Why did you leave him there 
invite him to come and eat with us. Moses accepted the invitation, and he settled there with him. In time, Rule gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah, to be his wife. Later, she gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom. For he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. So the reward for Moses' bravery is a wife, a son, and a family. Everything seems to be working out well for Moses, but something else is happening in the world. Back to Exodus 2. There it says, years passed and the king of Egypt died. That's the one that wanted to kill Moses for killing that Egyptian that one day. But the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help, and the cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered the covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, the covenant they had uh, was the promised land set aside for them by God. So he looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. You see, it was time for God to call Moses to his purpose. Moses wasn't called to just be a husband, father, and shepherd, which was the profession that he took up in Midian. Not that there's anything wrong with just being a, a husband, father, and shepherd. Those just aren't the only roles Moses was supposed to play out. It wasn't the only thing that Moses was created for. He was named Moses because he was supposed to draw the Hebrews out of Egypt. He was supposed to rescue them from the oppression they were being crushed by. Now one day, while Moses is taking out his flock, a bush right by him burst in the flames. But it wasn't withering like most fires do. And then he heard a voice calling his name. Moses walked closer to the bush. And that's where we pick up in Exodus 3. The voice in the bush is talking to Moses. The voice said, Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. So at this point here, Moses is totally tracking with everything the Lord is telling him. I'm sure Moses is like, yes, Lord. Yes, your people need you. Egypt has a bunch of bad dudes there. Yes, yes, Lord, rescue them. But look back to the scripture. God says this to Moses. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Moses is like, hold on, God. Who do you want out there? Moses wants no piece of going and leading his people out of Egypt. Moses wants nothing to do with Pharaoh. He already fled from one of these kings. He doesn't want to deal with another one. Remember, Moses grew up in the Egyptian palace with his adopted mom, the princess. He knows exactly how much power a Pharaoh can have. Pharaoh is in charge of an entire nation, and not just any nation, but a world power. So essentially, God called Moses to take on an entire nation by himself. God has called him to do an impossible task. However, God is unfazed by how Moses responds. So here is his response back to Moses. God answered, I will be with you. The God of the universe, the most powerful being in the history of everything, is saying he will be with Moses. But that wasn't enough. Three times, three more times, Moses tells God, how he isn't qualified to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Each time, God gives Moses a way that he can be qualified in that area. Moses doesn't listen, though. It doesn't matter what has happened to him in his life up to that point. It doesn't matter how he beat a nationwide genocide. It doesn't matter that he was placed in the palace of the Pharaoh. It doesn't matter that he was handed over a life where he has a family. 
Moses can't see any of the amazing things that God has handed over to him. Moses can't see the ways that God has taken care of him his entire life. All Moses can listen to is his fear. Which brings us to our big idea for today. If there's only one thing that you remember about today's talk, I want it to be this. Here it is. We must silence our fears to hear from God. We must silence our fears to hear from God. Guys, God might be talking to you right now and you are too busy being afraid to hear from Him. God might be calling you to that next great thing. God might be speaking to you about the purpose He has created you for, but you're too scared. There's an old saying that I like and it goes, God doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the call. What that means is that if He is telling you to do something, you can do it. You have been made for what He has been telling you to do. It was true for Moses, and it's true for you. Now, I understand exactly how hard it is to hear over your fear. Remember my story earlier. Akuo Church is running smoothly. We're getting ready to open up on July 12th. The week before, we were going to do a service project out at Woodlawn Lake. We had everything planned out. Then COVID hit. Everything changed. All the plans got thrown out the window. Not only that, people started shifting around. We ended up losing folks that we thought would be a major part of building our church. So naturally, I looked around and I started listening to this fear. I'd say, maybe this is, this is the wrong thing. Maybe this is the wrong time. Maybe I'm the wrong person. I was totally losing it. I didn't know what to do, when to do it, or how to do it. During that time, I felt like I couldn't get a clear word from God. I felt like there was so much noise in my head when I would sit down to talk with Him. I couldn't hear from Him. Then one day, we, we actually sat down and prayed as a team. And in my prayer, I had so many questions for God. What do we need to change? Where do we move from here? How does this change our plans? In this moment, finally, God spoke. I was able to hear Him. It wasn't a statement, though. God asked me a question. He asked me, do you trust my timing? Which was not what I wanted to hear at that moment. I wanted to hear a clear-cut plan and strategy for starting this church. So I kept on asking questions. How can we start a new church? We won't be able to meet. How can we figure out a new way for us to do this thing? Who am I to start a church in the middle of a global pandemic? Again, those same five words. Do you trust my timing? Guys, this has been one of the hardest words for me to walk. I knew very little about starting a church in general, much less in the middle of a global pandemic. But every time I would start to doubt, I would look back on all the great things God had done up to that moment to put me in that exact place. Then I would remember those words. I would think back on them to power me through. Do you trust my timing? Through believing in those words, we have gotten this church off the ground. And we have started our mission to get people into community with Jesus and one another. We've been doing that by listening to God, loving people, leading by empowering, and linking to our community. Guys, our God is greater than any of the fears or insecurities that we have surrounding us. That's something we have to remember every single day. That alone is a fantastic act of grace from God in our lives. Understanding that will help us silence our fears so we can hear from God. It's something Moses didn't initially understand. After the first time he was questioned, God could have packed up, found the next best guy to get this job done, but he didn't. He stuck with Moses. He gave concessions to him, and he still allowed Moses to be one of the leaders of the nation of Israel. And when we look at humanity in general, there are so many ways that we have failed God. We are totally deserving of every bit of wrath He can conjure up. Every single piece of it. But He still shows us grace. And He shows us grace in the form of Jesus. 
You see, when Jesus, God in human form, when he walked the earth, he did it perfectly. He lived a life without sin. He was perfect. The exact opposite of what any of us are, right? If anyone deserved a pass in this life, it was Jesus. But in his perfection, Jesus knew the only chance we had at everlasting life was for him to take on our sin. He took on all the ways we fall short. He did it as the ultimate act of grace. In the same way God dealt with Moses questioning him and not trusting in God's word, Jesus dealt with us. He did it through love. Through love, Jesus took on our sin. And through love, he will take on our fears. So when we see our fears slowly creeping towards us, as if we're in a dark room and those fears are about to ambush us, we can rest knowing that they can never win. All of the things we fear should be seen as future triumphs. When they are conquered, we can know that it was God's grace that delivered the knockout blow. We know that it's not our own greatness that dealt with all these fears. And we know that because if we were great enough to deal with this, we would have done it by now. Our inadequacies, all the ways we fall short, actually serve as a living example of the greatness of our mighty God in heaven. Which is why it says this in 2 Corinthians. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in greatness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. So guys, don't fear all the ways you fall short. Look at it as a way for you to allow God to shine through you in your life. Remember that we must silence our fears to hear from God. You have to give yourself a break. We all fall short of perfection. We will always have fears and inadequacies, but that's what Jesus came down for, to erase all of that. So let Jesus erase all of that so you can hear from him better now than you ever have before. So when you find your burning bush, listen to it. Some of you might not get something as incredible as a burning bush. Some of you might hear a whisper in the middle of your prayer time. Some of you might get a feeling or a vibe or just understand like this is the truth. It might be something small that you see in a TV show or a sign on the side of the road. Whatever it is that God is speaking to you, listen to it. Don't let your fears keep you from that. We must silence our fears to hear from God. Now, some of you listening right now are saying, yeah, that's, that's nice for all of you good people. Uh, all of you good people that are listening, but not me. The only reason I'm listening to you right now is because someone has been telling me about this, about this church, and I'm just listening because I want them to get off my back. I don't even have a relationship with this God you're talking about. I don't even know about this Jesus that you've been talking about. My fears will always be too loud. I have done things in my life that you can't come back from. Now, if that's you, I want you to remember, you're in good company. Moses was in the exact same spot you were before God called him. So look at right now, this very moment, as the burning bush in your life. God is calling you right here, right now, to be in relationship with him, to be in a community with him. So if you want to enter into that relationship, pray something like this with me. And if you've already have that relationship, I want you to pray along with us because at Akuo, you always have a community to pray with. So everybody, let's just pray something like this. Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for calling me right now to be a part of your community. I know that I've messed up in my life. Even though I'm not perfect, I thank you for the sacrifice you made for me. And right here, right now, the best way I know how, I accept it. I accept that you died on the cross for my sins, for all the things I've done wrong. I give you my life, and I want to chase after you in the best way possible. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Now, if you just prayed that prayer, I am so proud of you. God is so proud of you. All of heaven is so proud of you. In the book of Luke, Jesus says, all of heaven is celebrating the decision that you just made. Not only that, all of Akuo Church is celebrating you right now. Guys, this is the first step to the rest of your life. And we want to help you on your journey of faith. So if you just prayed that prayer, we want you to message us on our social media. Or you can email me at humby.servera at akuo.church. And we want to help walk you through this season by connecting you to community and giving you some direction. Now, if you've been a believer, whether it's been for the last like five decades or the last five seconds, it just happened. And you want to start hearing from God or you want to start seeing what your purpose is on this earth. I want you to pray something like this along with me. Lord, I ask that you silence the fears that are surrounding me. I ask that you quiet the storm that I am in right now. I ask that you help me remember how mighty you are and that with you in my corner, I can do anything. Allow me to hear your call for my life clearly and pursue it with reckless abandon. I accept that you have defeated all the fears in my life. I love you. And in Jesus' wonderful name, we all pray. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for being a part of our service here at Aquil. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to message us on our social media platforms, or you can go to our website, akuo.church. That's A-K-O-U-O dot church to contact us. Also, since we are a totally digital church, you guys can help us move digitally. There are a few very easy ways that you can do that. The first thing you can do is share this video on your social media, or you can send the link to someone that you know that needs to hear this message. Another thing that you can do is like our social media or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also listen to, rate, and subscribe to our audio podcast. To find the podcast, all you have to do is search for Akuo, A-K-O-U-O, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SoundCloud. By doing this, you will help us get these messages out to more people, more people than we can ever imagine. Next, I wanna talk about how we practice generosity here at Akuo. What we do is practice the biblical method of giving called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. We believe when you trust God with anything in your life, there is a blessing. We believe that it's the same with your finances. Now, I'm not saying that because you tithe, you're going to have someone like drop off an 80-inch TV on your doorstep just because they love you, but you will receive a spiritual blessing. This is one of the areas that we can silence our fear and to help listen to God. And we don't want you to miss out on this blessing. We don't want you to miss out on getting closer to God. And you can tithe here at Akuo by going to our website, akuo.church, A-K-O-U-O dot church, and clicking on the giving link. Now, just so you know, we are generous with our money as well. In the coming weeks, we want to expand how we are linking to our community. And we have plenty of ideas on what we want to do. But if you have some ideas on how we can link with people, please reach out to us and we can get those things started. We've already been getting some ideas coming in, but we would love to get even more. So please contact us to let us know where we can link in to our community. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about. Each and every Wednesday night, we have a Bible study through Zoom. It's a time where we all get together online on Zoom. Abel's gonna sing us some worship songs, we're gonna read through the Bible, and we're gonna pray with one another. Each and every week, It's been so much fun. I love getting to know you guys and get a little bit closer with you each and every week. And we would love to see all of you watching and listening there this Wednesday. The link for the Zoom meeting is posted in all of our social media right now. Okay, guys, that's our seventh service. I want you to know that I love you all and I'm praying for you each and every week, all week long. So before we go, let me just pray over you uh, as we head out. Jesus, I thank you for this day. I ask that as these folks click off their computer, turn off their TV, and put down their phones, that they would feel your presence. I pray that they could feel you and hear you and know you better than they ever have before. I pray that when they see their burning bush 
and hear from you, Lord. I pray they would silence their fears to hear you in the best way possible. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. Jesus, we love you. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you on Wednesday.